Okay, good evening everyone. Today we, the members of Group 3, are going to present a presentation on the topic during recongenable languages and their closure properties. Now, going, moving on to the next slide. So, if, uh, so here we have the table of contents. Now, over to you, Devanjana. Good evening, sir. Myself, Devanjana Nandan. And now, starting with the turning bit of my example. So, a language N is said to be a recursively editable language if there exists a turning machine which will accept and therefore hold for all the input strings which are in N but may or may not hold for all input strings which are not in N. So, in the a recursively enable language, if we pass a string from the is recursively enable language into an the ending machine, then if that string belongs to a language, then the turning machine will accept and it will hold. And if we pass a string which is not belongs to a language, then it may or may not hold. We can not ensure that whether it money may can hold or may cannot hold. But the main difference between the recursive language and the recursively enable language is that in recursive language, the turning machine will always hold, it will either accept and hold or reject and hold. And in the recursive enable language, the turning machine will hold only when it is accepting the string and otherwise it may not hold. So that's from my side now. Patika will continue. So I was discussing about the closure properties of Turing recognizable languages and these are namely union, concatenation, clean start and intersection. Now I will ask Devanjana to move on to the next slide. So here I will try to talk about union of two recursively enumerable languages. So what happens is that if L1 and L2 are two recursive languages, their union will also be a recursively language because if tm turing machine holds for l1 and holds for l2 it will also hold for l1 union l2 now what happens is that if we consider two set set one which has elements namely a b c and set two which has elements namely uh, b c d the union of this will contain four elements a b c d now let us understand what happens suppose the system has two turing machines and if TM1, Turing machine 1 halts, then the system will halt. And if TM1, Turing machine 1 crash, then system checks that TM2 is already halted or not. If TM2 also halts, then system halts because then TM1 halts, then system halts. So TM1 and TM2 are not interdependent. Now moving on to the next slide, my next segment will discuss next property intersection. Okay, so uh, intersection, the intersection of RE languages. Let us revise the intersection of the sets. Set 1 is equal to curly braces open A comma B comma C, curly very close. Set 2 is equal to curly braces open B comma C comma D, curly very close. Set 1 is an intersection of set 2, which is equal to curly braces open B comma C, curly very close. Now let us understand the same concept in Turing machine. Suppose a system has two Turing machines, T1 and TM2. If T1 crash, then all the system crashes. If T1 halts, then the system checks that TM2 is ready to halt or not. After this, if T1 halts, then the system halts because this is an intersection and the intersection means that if T1 crashes, the system crashes. If T1 halts, then check TM2 or TMN. And if TM2 is also halted, the system halts. If T1, TM1 and TM2 or TMN crash, then the system crashes. Now moving on to the next slide. Concatenation. Let L1 and L2 be the two Turing recognizable languages. Given an input W, we <coughs> use non-determinism and guess a partition W. Say W is equal to X1. Now run the respective Turing machine of L1 and L2 on X and Y respectively. If both accept, then accept, else reject. <coughs> Clean start. Let L1 be Turing recognizable languages. Given an input W, 
be non deterministic way first guess a number k and then guess a k partition of given input now for each string in partition check whether it belongs to an original language now moving on to the next slide now math up will going to be continue over to you now thank you so in this slide we come across the examples the set of faulting tuning machine is recursively enable but not recursive indeed one can run the tuning machine and accept if the machine halt hence it recursively enable on the other hand the problem is undecidable some other recursively enable language that are not recursively include that is post corresponding problem mortality complexity theory and in in scheduling problem moving to next slide from next slide my teammate will continue Question: Find whether the list is M is equals to parentheses open A B comma B A B comma B B A A A parentheses close and N is equals to parentheses open A comma B A comma B A B parentheses close. Have a post correspondence solution. Solution: In this case, there is no solution because mod of x two x one x three is not equal to mod of y two y one and y three. Lengths are not the same. Hence, it can be said. that this post correspondence problem is undecidable 
now this the next slide will be presented by my uh, another teammate So in this slide, we have come across the example so that is, if, if we take an input of a tuning machine and an input of a string W, the problem is that the tuning machine finishes computing of the string W in a finite number of states. The number, the answer must be either yes or no. So we can prove by, at first we will assume that such a tuning machine exists to solve this problem and then we will show this it is a contradicting itself. We will call this tuning machine as an halting machine that produces a yes or no in a finite minute, in a finite minute amount of time. If the halting machine finishes in a finite amount of time, the output comes as yes, otherwise as no. The flowing is a block diagram of an halting machine that so uh, we will design an inverted halting machine HM as if H returns yes, then loop forever. If H returns no, then halt. The flowing in the block diagram of an inverted halting machine. Further machine HM2 that is a second diagram which shows which input itself is constructed as for, uh, constructed as follow. If HM2 holds an input loop forever, else halt. Here we have got an uncontradiction hence the halting problem is undecidable. From next slide, my next image will continue. So now starting with the multiple choice questions. So the first question is which of the following statement is for R4. So our first is for every non-deterministic turning machine there exists an equivalent turning machine. Our second option is standing recognizable languages are closed under union and complementation. Third option is standing recognizable languages are closed under intersection and complementation. Fourth option is standing recognizable languages are closed under union and intersection. And our options for choosing is A1 and 4, B is 1 and 3, and C is 2 and D is 3. So our solution is 3 because the statement one is true as we can convert every non-deterministic turning machine to deterministic turning machine. As statement two is false, as turning recognizable languages, R languages are not closed at the complementation. Statement three, uh, three is again true. As standing decidable languages, RC languages are closed at the intersection and complementation. And statement four, turning recognizable languages are closed at the union and the intersection. So this is again two. So the final solution is three as it is false. So that's all. Now my next team member will continue from the second question. So uh, I will discuss the second question. So we have to read the question first. So the question reads, L1 is a recursive language. And let L2 and L3 are languages that are recursively enumerable but not recursive. So which of the following statements is not necessarily true? So we have been given four options in total and the four options, uh, the first option is L2 minus L1 is recursively enumerable, second option is L1 minus L3 is recursively enumerable, third is L2 intersection L1 is recursively enumerable and fourth is L2 union L1 is recursively enumerable. Now if we move on to the solution part, the solution of this question is answer B and it is because if we take the case of option A, it will become always true because recursively enumerable is recursively is always recursive and it's a fact. And if you move on to the option B, it is not always true. As L1 minus L3 equals to L1 intersection complement L3. And L1 is recursive, L3 is recursively enumerable but not necessarily recursive. So we have to note this point. And moving on to options C and D, it is always true. Recursively enumerable languages are closed under intersection and union. So, to all these facts, we can understand the solution is B. Now, the next question will be discussed by my next team. Now, moving on to the question number three. The set of all recursively enumerable uh, languages is uh, options are A, close under complementation, B, close under intersection, C, a subset of set of all recursive languages, D, an uncountable set. So the solution is the option number B. Now, moving on to the next slide. Now, uh, this slide is going to be uh, presented by my friend. So in this slide, we come across the 
multiple choice question number four. The question is let L1 be a regular language, L2 be a deterministic, contextual language, and LT is a recursively enumerable but not recursive language. Which of the following statement is false? The options are L1 intersection, L2 is deterministic CRF, CFL, L3, this, uh, option B, L3 intersection, L1 recursive, option C is L1 union, L2 is context free, and L, the option D is L1 intersection, L2 and intersection, L3 is recursive enumerable. Thus, for this question, the solution is B because you know, the first option that this statement is to be because deter deterministic context free language are close under intersection with regular language, whereas a yeah, solution B is to be because it, this yeah, is false because L1 is recursively and every recursive language is dis decidable, L3 is recursively enumerable but not recursive, so L3 is undecidable intersection of recursive language. A recursive enumerable language is recursively enumerable. And option C is true because L1 is regular, whereas uh, option D is also true because L1 is regular, since it is also recursively enumerable. So moving to next slide. So uh, these are the uh, for, uh, we have concluded over here. This we have discussed uh, in this presentation. We discuss about the uh, tectonic recognition language and its cursor properties. Also, we have seen some of the examples and multiple choice questions based on which uh, we have uh, which we help us in better understanding and explanation of the topic. Moving to the next slide. So, we, yeah, these are the reference from where we have uh, compiled the PowerPoint presentation from which has us to do this project. That's all from our group. Thank you. Thank you. Very good presentation. Thank you.